Well, it doesn't matter whether it's in Germany, the UK, Australia, or wherever. You've still got to decide who is going to get it first. In the United States, an independent panel is meeting now, right now, to advise the CDC on who should get vaccinated. Their vote is described by one longtime member of that panel as unprecedented. A former director of the CDC is clear on where he believes the priority must lie. You want to really focus on nursing homes because that's where 40% of the deaths have been. In terms of fairness, you want to make sure that doctors get it because and nurses and all healthcare workers, not just uh, the people who you may see stories about, but the people cleaning the floors, the people checking people in, the people who are exposed and are at risk not just of getting it, but of spreading it. Seth Berkeley is CEO of Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, which works to get vaccines to kids and others in the world's poorest countries. And Seth is in Geneva. We'll come to the work of Gavi in just a second. But the, the difficulty here, I'll give you an example. Does a 55-year-old policeman have a... should get it ahead of a 22-year-old nursing home worker? You see the difference? You see where I'm going with that? Once we start going down this road of who first, you then really end up in, well, yes, but then you've got to add in age and you've got to add in this and that and the other. What's the principle do you think we should follow? Well, we were clear when we started, Richard, that we want to get it to healthcare workers first. Why? Because they're critical to take care of patients and to make sure the health system doesn't get overwhelmed, but also because potentially if the vaccine blocks transmission, they are also going to be exposed to people who are at risk and they could transmit to. So the idea was healthcare workers first, and that takes some of the, the drain off the healthcare system and then move to the most vulnerable, starting with the elderly and then moving into other risk groups. Is it an ethical question, this? I mean, obviously, it's, it, it, there's an ethical involvement, but between, say, elderly in, in health care or health care workers, uh, as you put it, or is this one of those things where reasonable people can disagree? Well, I think everybody will have their own opinion. Of course, I'm focused on uh, most of the rest of the world, poor countries, et cetera. And in those countries, the healthcare workforce is so small already. Any right. loss of that healthcare workforce will make a difference for, you know, the whole healthcare system. Seth, whilst this is a cruel reality, we're into, we're big talking about reality tonight. It's a cruel reality that whilst just about everybody's going to be nearly vaccinated if they wish to be by mid to late next year in developed economies. I wonder how fast and how far you think developing world, Africa, sub-Saharan Africa, before they get to, uh, the, the vaccine in serious numbers. Well, Richard, as you know, we formed the COVAX facility mm -hmm. exactly to deal with that challenge. In 2009, during the swine flu, all of the vaccine went to wealthy countries. We believe the world isn't safe, the economies won't come back unless everyone's safe. So today, 189 countries are engaged. That's high income, upper middle income, as well as low income countries. And the idea is to try to have it within a reasonable time frame of when it gets rolled out in wealthy countries. That's the right way to deal with a global pandemic is with a global response. Uh, because there's also the, the, the problem that the not only will the developing, uh, the poorer countries, emerging markets, not only will they not get the vaccine or re uh, risk not getting it, the people living there will be stigmatised and face the sort of restrictions that will prevent them taking part in the global economy. Well, I think that's true, but you have to remember no vaccine is 100% effective, nor do 100% of people get it. So if there are large reservoirs of virus circulating anywhere in the world, it puts the whole world at risk. So countries that are wealthy, even if they're vaccinated, are not going to be returned to normal commerce and trade and tourism unless they know the epidemic is dampened everywhere in the world. And that's why it's so critical this is a global response. How much more money do you need? I know you got to recently you got another two billion to help to buy vaccines, and, and I presume all the various manufacturers are selling to you at cost. But how much more money? How long's a piece of string do you need? 
Well, we're asking for an additional $5 billion because we want to deliver a billion doses in developing countries by the end of 2021. Of course, we don't know yet what the final cost is going to be. It's going to be depending on the yield of the vaccines, which particular combinations of vaccines ultimately are rolled out there. Um, but that's a pretty good estimate of what it's going to cost. Right. Uh, and again, this is in everybody's best interest. And um, which of the vaccines... Pardon the, the beauty contest. Which of the vaccines do you like the best? Obviously, because of the difficulties of transportation and storage. Which one works best for you and your patients? Well, I mean, I think this is a, is a question of what location and in what population. It's been extraordinary, the mRNA vaccines. We've seen very, very high efficacy for a new technology. Really exciting. As you know, the AstraZeneca results have just come in, a slightly lower efficacy result, although that was in interim studies. We're waiting for more data, but that is an easier to use cold chain. Some of the vaccines coming down the pike are single dose. And there are new technologies coming that also uh, may bring advantages. So we're going to have to look at not just the vaccines, where they're used, but also which right. subpopulations. Are we talking about elderly? Are we talking about women of reproductive age? Are we talking about refugees? It's going to matter for which vaccine is best for them. Gosh, the, the, the level of complexity, it's phenomenal. But I'm grateful, sir, that you came today to tell us about it. And we'll talk more from Gavi. Thank you.